All right, so you, everybody should be able to hear me loud and clear. My name is James Anderson. Thank you guys for attending our online success webinar for the Millionaire Society. I'm super excited for everybody who's on because we got some great information that we're going to actually be sharing here uh, this evening. And we're going to talk about local meetings in your business in particular. Now, if you guys saw the topic, Robert put that up there. Um, of course, it's something I think that's very vital that um, we typically don't talk about on a regular basis. So I said, what other better platform than to do it than right here on our Tuesday night trainings here? And again, like I say, I do appreciate everybody accommodating the time. So you guys are winners in my book. You showed up. You're ready to learn something. So, of course, I'm going to try to pour into as much as I possibly can to you this particular evening. I got a lot of information to go through, but I don't have a lot of time. So you guys want to make sure that you're taking notes, and of course, you can always drop any of your questions in the chat, and we're going to, of course, have an open discussion afterwards. But let's talk about what we're trying to get done tonight, all right? And here's the thing. We want to do a couple things. Let's see here if I can get rid of that guy. All right, let me do this here, and boom, let's go back to play, and we look like we're rolling out. So what we want to hit tonight is just basically going to be the importance of the local live meeting. We're going to talk about the meeting flow. We're going to talk about the invitation process. And then we're going to, of course, end with the open discussion as we normally do. So the biggest thing, ladies and gentlemen, I think is a big, big, big underutilized resource that we have across my econ. And what we do is our local live meetings. They are so, they are so vital and so important to your success in this business. I cannot you know, I, I just can't put a price on it, right? I, I, can't, I can't even put into words how important they particularly are because every leader that I've ever talked to, that I've ever interviewed, that I ever kicked it with, that I ever chopped it up with, that I ever just kind of just rubbed elbows with, that have been successful in the networking industry in general, in the, in the business that we're in, right? They've always told me the number one critical factor in you getting anything done in this business to make sure you plug into your local and live meetings. And I think that's a testament. I mean, there has to be something there because if you ask anybody who's done anything in networking, no matter what the company, no matter what it is they do, they're going to tell you one key thing. The local and live meeting is super important. So let's go ahead and jump into it right now. And really, I want to focus on what's the importance of the live local meeting that you have going on in your area that you have access to. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there might be some things that you need to understand. It might not be, you know, something every week that's set up. It might be twice a week. It might be once a month, whatever it is. What's going on local in your particular area? And the real important is point to three key reasons. And this is kind of what I've gathered as I've been talking to different leaders. And what I've known is a tribute to what I've been able to do in this business and how successful so I've been able to flip my mindset, flip my finances, and build a team. It's three key reasons, and you want to make sure you jot that down. Reason number one is this thing called focus. Now, focus is so tremendous because when you're focused, you're more effective. When you're focused, you're more, you know, you're just more efficient at what you're doing. Have you ever tried to multitask at certain things? I know people say multitasking is, is a skill, it's an art. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, our brains and our bodies just does not work that way. What we do is we actually switch from one thing back to the other, back to the other, back to the other. But really, as human beings, we can't really do two things at once. And if we try to do two things at once, we're kind of half tapped into one and half tapped into the other, right? You really, you got two eyes, right? Have you ever tried to point your eyes two different directions? It just doesn't work unless you cross them, you know, and it's not a joke. But you want to understand that focus is something internal to yourself. And when you're focused on something, you can just absorb so much more information behind whatever it is that you're doing at that particular moment. So when you're at your local and live meeting, if you're focused, if you're tuned in, if you're drawing in, I guarantee that you're going to learn some things that you did not know before. I have people on my team that's been working with me for years, and they come to a live local meeting, and they can be a person that comes to every single meeting, but they always say, wow, I never knew that. I never understood that. Or oh, that's something I learned new today. Or oh, the light bulb went off on that. You know, I never thought about it that way. See, because they're focused in on what's actually going in, the presentation, the information, the questions, the answers that's going on back and forth, they're in tune, they're focused on what the guests are saying, they're, fo they're hearing all those things, they're immersing themselves in that particular environment, you have no choice but to get better in what you're doing. So that's why your local and live meeting is so important. Yes, I understand online. Yes, we're online right now. 
Yes, I understand Facebook Live and YouTube videos and all that stuff. I have no problem with that. You guys know I make videos all the time. However, when you're live, you got people right there. You can see a person. You can feel a person. You can touch a person. You have them right there so the people sit next to you. You're going to be more focused, which is ultimately going to give you more exertion on what's going on. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, is you have this thing called Mozone. Now, if you never heard this word before, this is a, this is a slang term in my econ. It's called Mozone. And what that stands for is Momentum Zone. That is such a huge thing, and it's something that you can't see, right? You can't see Mozone, but you can feel it. You ever walk into a room where you feel as though just the energy is so great in there, you don't know what's going on, but the energy is just it just feels good. You feel you feel awesome. You feel good. You kind of feel it in there. That's that mo zone. So when you got people that are actually focused on the information they hand, and you got reactions and you got energy coming off for individuals, and you got the the whole room is tuned in. They enjoying the conversation. They enjoying the content that's being presented. They enjoying each other's company. You get into what's called momentum zone. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been in momentum zone personally. You want to make sure that you you tap into that. And if you have tapped into it, what better way than to put your guests in that particular atmosphere? See, when you have prospects and when you have guests at your particular meeting, you have to understand that Mozone is key to actually having them being interested in what we're doing. Your information can be spot on. You can recite the presentation word for word perfectly with no mistakes, no mishaps. You hit all the T's, you dotted all the I's. Everything is, is, is perfect. You did the most seamless presentation ever done by anybody in my econ. But I guarantee you, if there's no energy in that room, you're not going to have anybody that's going to be interested in joining you. Because bottom line is people hate boredom. People like to be interested. And they like to feel as though there's actually something there. So you want to be participating in what we call Mozone, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be there. You have to experience it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to get to a local live meeting and experience what I'm saying. When, when everything is popping, everybody's happy, everybody's feeling good, you are going to see it. It's almost magical. But now the third thing is just honestly people. Ladies and gentlemen, human beings, we react so much better when we are around other people. I understand We've been, you know, America and society and whatever we do, you know, the whole world, because we're moving into the information age, everybody started building up walls around them. Trust me, I was a victim of it myself. You know, you call yourself introverted. But in reality, in, in being successful and garnering success and definitely being successful in network marketing, because we call it the people business, is that you have to start getting around other people on a regular basis and throwing yourself into that situation. And when you throw yourself in that situation, you can start chipping down at that brick wall that you built up over the years called being introverted, and you can start just breaking down those barriers. You can start breaking down that awkwardness that you have with speaking to people or shaking hands or, you know, picking up on somebody's body language. You can break all those barriers down because you're constantly putting yourself into a pool of people. Now, let me give you guys a secret right here. What other way to practice your own personal, I'll call it quirkiness or awkwardness that you might have with people than to do it with people that are going to automatically like and accept you and want you to be there because it's your own local meeting? See, what area do I have to practice, you know, eye contact, handshake, you know, posture and all those things like that that make you a better communicator than to do it with individuals that already would want me to be there, that already invited me out. See, that's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous play for you, ladies and gentlemen, that where on the personal development side, you have the opportunity to get the things done. So like I said, ladies and gentlemen, it's focus, okay, the momentum, the energy, the room, and then, of course, being around people. Those three factors are what the major key factors in as far as running the, 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 the local meeting and for yourself to get the best experience for it. Now, if you get a great experience from the local meeting itself, what happens if you have a prospect that's there sapping up and sucking up on that energy that you have right there? 
What's there for a prospect when they see the people they're having a success? What is the prospect going to say when they're there and they see the momentum, they see the energy, and they see everybody's having fun and having success? So it's going to make your job as far as recruiting people and bringing people on board a lot easier than what it be what it will be if you're just trying to do everything one on one. You know, I have people that say, "Well, I'm just going to do all one on ones. I don't feel like coming to that meeting stuff." Well, that's fine. It's a tough gig out there. You got to be that much more, that much more. I mean, you got to be that much more posture, that much more polished. Not to say you can't do a one on one. But it's just so much easier when you got the whole group just moving and grooving, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why it's so important. But now, let's break it down and kind of s- summarize it here with just some quick bullet points. From those three top reasons, number one, you break your barriers. You tap into your support network. When you attend your live meeting, you're going to break your barriers that you have because you're going to see – other people around you doing things that you want to do, and then you want to get into your head, well, if they can do it, then I can do it too. You're also going to learn how to hack your success. Now, I've talked about this a little bit previously, but when you learn how to hack your success is, let's say, for instance, you want to be a, a very polished, clean, great, motivational speaker when you're presenting the MyEcon uh, presentation. Well, what other better way to do that than to attend a live meetings and see someone doing that? So you're going to start learning little trips and little, little tips and tricks of the trade to learn how to short circuit your success. See, I want all the hacks that I can get to get me to where I'm trying to get faster. I know a lot of people have the thing, which is let me let me just scrape up my knee, let me just let me just bump my head and make my way through it. No, I don't want to bump my head, and scrape my knees. I want to I tell me exactly what I need to do because I know how to follow directions that's going to help me get to where I need to be as quickly as possible. You're only going to get that by plugging into your local meetings. Number three, you're going to live, you, I mean, you cannot come hang out in my econ meeting and don't leave with something that you didn't have prior to coming. I'll be hard-pressed to find anybody, anybody off the street, anyone that come into a my econ meeting and say, Yep, I knew everything you guys said. I understand it all. I get it all. I'm already participating, doing everything that you guys are doing. I have the same system and everything. And guess what? I need absolutely nothing from you. I've got nothing for you. I've gotten zero value. Yeah, right. Listen, we already know that 76% of people are living from check to check, right? We already know that 4% of people are going to have adequate capital sold away from retirement. We already know that, you know, 500, I mean, sorry, 50% plus or more, don't even have $400 in cash to cover an emergency. So we already know what we're talking about is, is work that's waiting to go. So people are going to come in and leave with something that they didn't have before. Now, if you can do it as an associate, then think about your prospect and what type of value they're going to get. That's back to the whole thing of providing value to the marketplace. And then ultimately, I talked about this, but move as a unit does motivate those who are not in unit, and it gives them a larger picture. So you're going to give people a larger picture when you have the meeting running efficiently, all those three factors are in there, everybody's focused, everybody's participating. You're going to give people the, the, the mindset to say, well, there's something going on over here. I think I need to get with this. See, so you're leveraging everybody else's energy and everybody else's talents, resources, presentations to help you build your business. See, it's not just about, oh, we want to have a bunch of people in the room. No, what you need to understand is that when you have guests there and when you particularly have guests and other people have guests and other associates are there and you've got a great presenter, you have people that you're, you're, you have people picking up from other bits of information outside of yourself. So you're essentially leveraging the entire room, the entire network, the entire support system, all the energy, all the emotion, all the success to help you recruit. Again, you're short-circuiting your success. But now, let's just play a, play a little game here. You're looking at my screen right now, which do you prefer? Do you prefer the one on the left or do you prefer the one on the right? Think about yourself as a prospect. Think about yourself as a guest. Think about yourself as a person who never heard of income shipping and you got invited out into an event from one of your good friends. What, where would you be more excited about? Would you be more excited about the picture on the left 
or the picture on the right. And for those of you who are not dialed in, what I got on the left is pretty much a conference room doing a presentation, and it's got about five or six people in there. And then on the right side, we got a full room from our Midwest Cash Flow Conference. Where do you think more energy is going to exist at? See, look at the left picture. You see everybody's head kind of looking down. Now, I don't know if they're getting ready or not. You got a guy in the middle walking away. I don't know. This is also – somebody had this online, so I said I'm stealing it, okay? But you got one guy look like he's walking out. A couple guys look like they're on the phone. I don't know what's going on. But look at the picture on the right. You see everybody is focused on the speaker. Everybody's got the energy to being directed to what's being presented. So what would you prefer, and just put your mind in this prospect, what would you prefer to walk into? What type of room? See, I asked that question, I posed that question because it's very important for you to understand. See, not only are you helping yourself, but you're helping your potential guests get an understanding, and you're helping the other teammates because everybody moves as a unit. So now, let's put it in perspective, okay? So... There's 672 hours in one month. Yes, I know somebody's going to break out the calculator and, and say it's 720. Look, I know it's 720. I, I, I got it. But the reason why I say it's 672 because I'm going to give you two days. I'm going to give you one day where you're just going to be in your feelings and you're not going to feel like you're doing nothing. And then I'm going to give you the other day, and that's just going to be the day that life hits you when you have four blowouts on the freeway every hour on hour, right? So I'm going to give you two days. I'm going to give you 672 hours out of a month. I know. I'm going to give you two freebies, right? But let's put it in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. We have you know, most local areas have two meetings a month, maybe a meeting a week, maybe a meeting once a month. And the question to ask yourself is: Can you commit four, eight hours per month for you and your team? See, when you look at it like that, I got six hundred plus hours to work with. Yes, I know some is going to be taken up from work, but when you think about it, most people work, you know, forty hours a week. That's only one hundred sixty hours a month. So you still got 500 hours after that. Even if I double it up and say you sleep and you work the same amount, that's 360. You still got half of that. You still got 300 hours. So can you commit to four, eight hours per month for you and your team? See, this is what tradition what people do is they say, well, I can't go to that meeting to this, this day because I got so much stuff going on. Or I can't come out this Saturday because I got so many things going on. Now, wait, 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 wait. If, 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 if you are going to be out here saying that, quote, unquote, oh, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you this, you that, you're part of the millionaire society, um, I'm an investor, I'm out here helping people with taxes. If you're, going to, if you're going to wear the badge of honor, then at least do the work behind the badge of honor. See, I know I might have ruffled some people's feathers with that, but it's the honors of God true. Entrepreneurs themselves show up regardless. See, you will be hard-pressed and be upset if you went to your local coffee shop that you go to every morning and the person who was supposed to open up the store just decided they weren't going to open up today because they didn't feel like it or they had something else to do. Or if you were going out to dinner, you was planning on taking your wife or your husband out to dinner, right? They're going to have a nice dinner. It was Friday night. You guys were going on a date. You decided you was going to Jay Alexander's, and you pulled up to Jay Alexander's, and lights was off, doors were closed, stove was cold. You would be upset. Why didn't they show up? They said they open for business. They say they're doing this. So, ladies and gentlemen, in your local area, when the doors are open to my econ and we're going to get some things done, why are you not showing up? See, let's talk about it the, the way that it should be talked about. And, yes, I know this is a call to action. And, yes, it's not about, you know, it's not about you helping the person out. You, you're helping other people with per se with the meeting per se. What you're doing is you're helping your team because you're utilizing, you're putting in the momentum, you're putting in energy, you're sharing your success. You never know. See, what if you were a single parent and you joined my econ and you were able to get out of debt and now you're an investor? See, what if there was another single parent there that was in the same position as you, looking to get out of debt, looking to invest, looking to put some money up for the kid, and you could have been that person they could have related to? But because you didn't feel like it, you didn't show up. 
So they couldn't they couldn't get the energy they needed to make a decision. See, ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to say this, but you know that's that's it's kind of low for a person to do. See, I don't show up to the meetings to show up for James. I don't show up to the meetings to show up because, oh, James is going to be speaking. I'm going to be there. It's not even about that. It's not about the flyers. It's not about any of that. I show up because I show up to help the team and push the team. Yes, I've got people coming on, and yes, I want the team to recruit, and I want to put in recruits and stuff like that. Yes, of course, we're in business. But I do more. Va- I give more value to individuals that might that that not even on my team that I don't benefit from monetarily, but I, I put out that value to help them out. So that way we move as a unit. Just some perspective. So let's speed it up a little bit and talk about the flow of the local meeting. So number one, it should run as pro status, ladies and gentlemen, and it should run buttery smooth. I don't care what anybody say. We are in business. I don't, uh, period. You have to run professionally, and you have to run smooth like you know what you're doing. If you have a meeting that doesn't flow, that's not smooth, that's not professional, people are going to pick up on that. They're going to view you as, as people that don't know, what, don't know what you guys got going on, and it's going to immediately turn them off. Let me, let me paint back the picture and think about it from, from your eyes. You have people that won't go to specific restaurants because you you think that you believe they'd be dirty, okay? Yes, I know there are some restaurants that are dirty, <laughs> but most restaurants have what's called inspections, all right? But just because it looks dirty, you probably won't go there, right? Or just because the people at the counter are not professional, you're not gonna deal with it, right? Just because the the, the servers are coming around and they got they got some dirty aprons. <laughs> and they're not clean and put together, you don't want them serving your food. You guys know where I'm going with this. So why is it that we feel as though we can run, you know, a half-step event or a half-step presentation or a half-step local meeting, and you won't hold yourself to the same standard as you would with anybody else you spend money with? Now, wait. People might say, well, James, I'm going to that place to spend money. Why aren't you having people coming out to your meeting to spend money? Are you having people coming out to your event and spend some money? Are we ultimately going to ask them to join the income shift and membership, become a part of my econ, give us the money, sign up so they can get going? Yes, I know the benefit they're going to get is going to be tremendous. But at that given moment, when we break it down, they're coming there to get some information, to make a decision whether or not they want to get in business with us. That's the bottom line. So it should always run professionally and smooth. And guys, I don't need to be professionally over the head. You guys know what professional is, okay? And if you're not, if you don't know, you're not sure, I'm not being funny, you know, work with some of your local leaders. Come up with some ideas on how to make you guys look professional. No, you do not have to look like, you know, the boardroom at Goldman Sachs, okay? You don't have to be intimidated. Everybody doesn't have to wear, you know, three-piece suits, you know, saying, looking like they're about to go and do a, pharma- a pharmaceutical company takedown. It does not have to be that way. But it should run professionally and should run smooth. You guys should look like you know what you're talking about. So let's review. Real quick, this is straight from your manual. It says key dynamics to an effective presentation. Remember, what communicates and moves people is 7% content, 38% voice, and 55% atmosphere and body language. It says people respond to more than what they feel, more to what they feel than what they actually hear. And people need to cause a crusade or emotional buy-in. That's what gets people moving. Information education alone will not move people. And you always want to incorporate your own personal promo and other people's promos there. We actually attract people into our business more than we recruit them. And I'm going to jump down to number uh, 10 and 11. It says play upbeat positive music to help set the atmosphere. Something so simple as far as having some music plan can help people it can help just move and get that mozone churning. Then number 11, constantly sell the dream of financial success via my econ. See, you can sell the dream 10 times over, but it don't have to be you saying it 10 times. It could be 10 different people. What holds more posture? 
See, it also say number 13, your address looks down, act, and be the role. You're a professional business owner. You're a leader. You're a presenter. You are the person with the information. You invited somebody out to this meeting. You went to go out and talk to individuals as far as coming to this and seeing this information. You are the professional. And, of course, like I say, number 14, guys, it goes back to the pro thing. Invest in your business. Have great equipment, laptops, tablets, uh, projectors, webinar systems, conference call systems, screens. All those things are going to greatly enhance your presentations and business success because you're looking like you're looking professional. Sidebar, I give you guys a funny story. Me and Mr. Patterfordell, we went to a presentation here in the local um, – local metro Detroit area, right? And I promise you, the guy did an okay presentation. Everything was all right. You know, the people was there was that, they were all right. But I couldn't get over the fact that they had their screen was so raggedy with holes in it, and it was crooked. I could not get over the fact that. I mean, that's the only I tried not to think about it, but that's the only thing I could think about. Like, why is the screen so crooked? And I'm not, I'm not talking about, like, crooked, like, being OCD, right? I'm talking about, like, one side is at, like, five feet and the other side is at, like, four feet. Like, it looked like it's about to fall. So every time that screen kind of wobbles and moves, every, you can just see everybody's head turning to see if this thing is going to fall. See, we shouldn't even be focused on that. We should be focused on what the presenter's saying. Why, why is everybody put place in best to see if the screen going to fall or not? That is a key thing as far as looking professional. And at that point, for me, they weren't professional. On whatever it is they do, regardless of what success they have, they weren't professional in my book. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's one key thing to follow. But I do want to throw this in here because I think it's very important that we cover this. Once you have the presentation clues, so we got the Mozone, we got the momentum, we got the testimonies, we got the great equipment, we're running a pro show, we are churning, we are on fire, the presentation was, was, was just crushed, everybody's feeling good, it's awesome, but the presentation is over with now. Immediately after, what do you do once the presentation concludes? And ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing to do, and that's close. So many individuals, I see this, so many individuals struggle with this. I've seen it firsthand more times over than not, and it's hurting your business right now at this day if you are not immediately going to close after the presentation is done. Why is that so important? It's because right after a person presents and everybody's hyped, everybody's ready, everybody's got that energy you can just you can just walk up to a person and say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and get you signed up right now. Okay, cool. What do I need to do? See, people are excited about the information. They've already sold themselves. They say, I'm getting down with this. But if you let the situation prolong, if you don't capitalize upon the timing, if you string it out, if you run it out, if you let it just bleed up, they're going through their hair right now trying to make excuses on why is it that they can't get started. See, remember, ladies and gentlemen, nobody likes to be sold to, right? Everybody wants to say, I control my money. I buy what I want to buy. And I need to do my due diligence and all that stuff like that. And I need to make sure that I understand I'm getting involved with the ethical organization. But, ladies and gentlemen, people respond to emotions more than all the facts and figures and things that you could ever tell them. So well, sometimes it's just straight-up timing. You got to get somebody while they're getting this good, while they're hyped, while they're ready to go. See, we have to become proficient closers because now we done took all this energy, all this mozo, all this great testimony, all this professional stuff, and all this music pumping and all this great energy, and we just wasted it because when it was bottled up, we just didn't want to reach out and grab it with our hands. How do you close? If you're not sure how to close, talk to your upline EVV. But if you want some tips from me as far as how do you close at that particular point, I'm not going to go into any scripts because it just make the training too long tonight, but you just want to ask somebody, hey, is there anything else that you need to know before we go ahead and get you started? 
or you could do an assumptive close. Hey, man, I'm so glad that you came out to uh, hang out. That information was great, wasn't it? Absolutely. Well, hey, look, it takes me five minutes to get you in the system. I got my computer up. I'm ready to go ahead and rock and roll. Oh, you know, uh, let's go ahead and get you started. I'm already typing. If I know their name, I'm already typing in their name. Billy, how you spell the last name, Billy? Like, I ain't even, I ain't even asked. I'm not even asked. Let's go ahead and get it closed. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to come, become proficient closers, you also must be proficient at the sign-up process. You want to be proficient at the sign-up process. You have to be proficient at the sign-up process. Again, Let's paint the picture on the other side. You're at, I don't know, pick whatever restaurant, AB, you're at McDonald's, okay? And you getting a, uh, it's hot outside, you're getting the frozen lemonade. And I hope they, I hope they bring that back because them things was good. You're getting the frozen lemonade and you're at the desk and you ordered a frozen lemonade, but yet the person doesn't know how to ring you up to take the money to go get your lemonade. You won't be too happy, will you? So now you just gonna like forget it then. I don't even want it. I'm about to leave. I'm gonna go to the next McDonald's. I'm gonna go to another store. I ain't coming back to McDonald's because y'all need to get some people in here trained to know how to ring somebody up. It sounds funny when you say it like that, to be honest, but it's the truth. You got a person that's excited, that loves money, kind of love what they heard. They've been moved by the motivator. They're ready to get going, but yet they don't know what to do next, and you're not giving them the option to do so. Do so. That's shame on you, not on the process. That's shame on you. You didn't ask for the clothes. You didn't get them set up. You didn't get them going. Guys, we got computers. We can do paper applications. You can do it on your cell phone. Get it done. And quiet as it kept, as much as we do in my econ, as much as we love to educate and provide value, nothing happens until a sale is made. Nobody gets paid. Nobody cuts no taxes. Nobody gets the system. No one gets the, the smart money credit system. Nobody gets the website until a sale is closed, period. And please take that as straightforward as you possibly can for me. If a transaction does not happen, nothing moves. Now, I'll give you guys another pro tip here. We're going to keep it moving because I want to make sure we have time for the discussion um, after this. So I hope this has been giving you guys some information, some great info. Um, of course, you guys can always drop stuff in the comments and the chat box and stuff like that. We can follow back up with those questions. But I hope this is giving you guys some value as far as where we are with things. But now, I'm going to go ahead and speed it up, and then we're going to be wrapped up in here because I only got like two or three more slides. Number one, the real FaceTime happens when people, you know, are at the meeting after the meeting, okay? If you want to know the true secret of learning your success, hang out with somebody after the meeting and just ask somebody, hey, can we hang out for 15, 20 minutes to kind of talk? Now, typically, we do it as a tradition, right? We all get together, we kick it, we talk about business, what's our next steps, how to grow. But let's say, for instance, you don't have that going on. How about you pick the person that's most successful in your group and just say, hey, can I sit down and chat with you for about 15, 20 minutes after the, after the meeting? If they are a real leader, they would definitely do that. It, it could be somebody on your sideline that's doing something different that, that's having some success with it. Hey, can I chop it up with you for about 15, 20 minutes after the meeting? See, that normal FaceTime is what you're not going to get via email, via these webinars. That's going to be the, 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 real, the real information time, and that's where the value is. So we're going to wrap up with the invitation, and it's very simple. The bottom line is your enthusiasm is what's going to attract prospects to your local meeting, period. That's point blank. Bottom line, your enthusiasm, is, your enthusiasm is what's going to attract prospects to your local meeting. If you want the technical scripts, you can get them from your actual training manuals. But all you're going to need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is do a couple things. Number one, you want to edify. And edify means you want to actually present the person who's having the information, who's the expert. You want to present them as the expert. You want to position them as the expert. Listen, this person's actually coming here to share some information. The dude's name is John Pedafidio. Listen, dude, he retired at 34 years old, and he's going to teach me, he's been teaching me to do the same thing. Dude, it's not even about me at this point. You have to come here. This guy speak. He's an amazing speaker. I'm telling you, you need to see this person because I don't know when the next time he's going to be able to present. I'm edifying. I'm positioning. I'm making that person the position of authority. And you guys heard me promote. Listen, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to do it, but you need to get to this one. Can you be my guest? It's happening this day, this day, this day only. Grave mistake we make. We do meetings every Tuesday. Well, a person now thinks in their head, well, hey, I can just come to any Tuesday I want to. 
no, I'm doing it this Wednesday. You need to be here. This is going to be awesome. And then guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You're just going to keep on edifying some more, and you're going to keep promoting some more, and then you're going to edify some more after that, and then you're going to promote some more after that. Edify, promote, edify, promote, edify, promote, edify, promote. That's it. That's what's going to help you build your local meeting. Of course, you got to have prospects to talk to, but that's in another training. This is specifically talking about the meeting itself. Edify, promote, edify, promote, edify, promote. You guys are going to deliver on the professionalism. You guys are going to deliver on the content. You're going to deliver on the energy, the testimonies, and all that's the easy stuff. Getting the butts in the seat, getting the people there is where the work comes in, and it's only going to come from your enthusiasm. So quick tips, ladies and gentlemen. Find out your local area meetings. You can find it in the back office. You can ask people in the main society, get in your messenger groups, all these resources that we have. You can find out what's going on. There's literally like a My Econ group for every metro trade area. I mean, every uh, metropolitan area, I think we're the only one that don't have it. And I think we just got the Marriott Society. But I know there's a MyEcon Chicago, a MyEcon Dallas, a MyEcon Florida. Find out where those groups are. Network with people. See what's going on. And if there's not one available in your area, your period, you don't have one at all going on, then what a better time to start one. What a better time to start one if there's not one available. That means you got a marketplace to tap into. Ladies and gentlemen, you're stronger together than you are apart. And when you're at these events, when you're at these local meetings, watch, learn, observe, and practice from the live meeting. I hear many people say that, well, I don't want to come to the meeting because all the things that you're going to cover, I already know. Okay, great. Guess what? You're on the agenda next week to teach this because if you know it already and if you have all the information, then we need more trainers, then get up and let's train on it. So a lot of people don't want to do that because you truly don't know the information until you actually can teach it. You only can you only can teach something if you absolutely learn the information, know the information like the back of your head, and have experiences from that information. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, commit. Commit to supporting your team. Commit to supporting yourself. Commit to the commit to our, your potential new business partners that's going to be in your area, and commit over and over again just to say that you did commit because those who show up are the ones who win. I'll close with this. There was a um, gentleman who was really successful in network marketing. His name was Tim Sales. Funny, his last name was Sales. If you guys ever heard of him, you know, older guy, military guy, uh, you know, made made great money, had some training tapes and things like that out there. But, you know, the real deal, okay, because there's a lot of people out there who have training tapes who got the real deal. So this guy was the real deal, right? And Tim Sales basically said that if there was ever a local meeting going on in the area, I don't care if it was by me, for me, not with me. I didn't know the people. He said that if there was anything going on within the hour radius on the on the business that I was in, I was in the house. Because nobody's gonna come in and 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 one up me and do things that I don't know about in my particular business. Now he said it from a competitive standpoint, but that's absolutely true. What he was stating was is that he's always plugged in. He's always know what's going on. He's going to be the expert, the resource of my econ. I'm sorry, I'm saying that from my, from my, from my uh, standpoint, he was going to be the resource from his business, and he's going to be the expert in his business, so he's always going to know what's going on in his particular area. So that way he found that those who showed up the most are the ones who obviously won because of all the things we talked about this evening, ladies and gentlemen. So now, that's it for me as far as the particular um, content this evening. So what I want to do is I'm going to unmute the call, all right, and uh, give everybody a chance to answer any questions, anything like that. This is an open discussion, questions and answers. We're talking about local meeting areas, and then we're going to go ahead and rock and roll here. So let me go ahead and mute off the call really quickly, unmute the call, and stop the recording.